We're now in Venice. It's a beautiful day. This is the part of the movie where Vesper and I, uh, it's, I've actually tendered my resignation and we're um, sailing into to Venice where our new life is just about to begin. And um, things go tragically wrong. A lot of um, movies have been made here and they're all quite dramatic and tragic. And uh, I would say it's uh, like a bit like death in Venice here. <laughs> That's what the scene is about. We needed a really remarkable place to have the culmination of a love affair between Vesper and Bond. Venice came up because it felt appropriate emotionally for Bond and Vesper's relationship to collapse in this sinking city. Venice is, has its own complications and it's a beautiful city that it is. Everything has to go by boat. First of all, we're at the height of the tourist season. It makes it very difficult for the um, for the crew, but also for the tourists. You know, they don't like being interrupted, and why should they? This happens to be a sequence where Daniel runs across the square, so we had something like 400 extra of our own. Shooting here in St. Mark's Square is logistically very complicated. It's certainly one of the biggest tourist attractions in the world. Trying to shoot in St. Mark's Square with a thousand people already in the square, you can't get rid of them, obviously. Uh, well, it wasn't easy. It was a tough, tough shoot, Venice. People have got, you know, they're on holiday. <laughs> so why not stand around and watch a film crew for a couple of hours? real actually because you know so many movies have been shot there it was just you know mythical and um, felt like I felt really like a Bond girl when I was on that boat this is the easy bit I've been sitting here sailing around on a boat around the Grand Canal has been sort of part of the, one of the easiest part of the job it's been a sort of like a mini vacation really it's back to work next Monday we've got this incredible set of pinewood built now which is built on a gimbal and it's going to it, it's, it's going to be fantastic but it's 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 going to be very tricky to work on well the final episode of the action episode of the film involves a sinking house we saw a documentary about the the leaning tower of pisa and it had this that these british engineers had put a, a kind of bladder uh, underneath it to prop it up in the ground so that gave us the idea of putting balloons and inflatable things to shore up a sinking palazzo. And as soon as James Bond's in a, in a place like that and bullets are going off. It was an inspired idea because um, I had grave doubts about it to start with. I mean, okay, so a house sinks, so what? You know, what does that mean? Um, uh, I didn't. I felt it wasn't spectacular, um, but as it turned out, it's probably the best sequence in the movie. You do wonder how you're going to shoot a sequence involving a sinking house on the Grand Canal, and uh, we have a pretty clever group. Uh, Chris Cobalt and his boys have built at the 007 stage the interior of the house above tanks of water with all kinds of uh, equipment to make it tilt and to rock it and to bring it down into the water. Listening, paying attention, hold the work. Okay, we're going up to a set now which uh, sinks into the water about uh, 18 feet and also tilts on both axes. 
The date today is the 5th of, 5th of December and we first get into the 007 stage on the 3rd of January, so we've got months before we can get in there. Uh, we will eventually be filming somewhere around the end of June. There was a complication of where we were going to do it, how we are going to do it. Of course, we did look um, in Prague to see if there were any spaces big enough. It, it was impossible and uh, it was agreed then we should use the 007 stage. What we're having to do at the moment is prefab um, a lot of the beams and steel work so that we can go in as soon as we get the stage, we can go straight into there with a lot of guys and get this framework up very quickly. Initially we went to Martin Campbell and you know I felt that although we could take it up and down, it'd be nice to have some sideways movement in it so we could tilt it. You know, so if the bags went along this side it would tilt down that way. Martin, bless him, wanted to take it one step further and wanted it to be tilt tilted on all axes, so we had to put in another movement there. So we've got this whole thing going down, going through two, two axes into the water. So he, he has the choice of whatever angle it goes down, as well as sinking at the same time, so it's moving as it goes down. It's uh, loosely designed on the interior of the Danielli. The Danielli is an amazing hotel, but it's not just a normal hotel, it was an old palace. When you look up, you've got these various stairways, balconies, and uh, you could make it as dull as ditch water, or you could make it, uh, I think, hopefully reasonably spectacular. Well, he does think big piece. When they first talked about the sinking room, I thought it'd be about 30 foot square and about, what, two storeys high. Uh, my mouth, my jaw dropped when I saw the size of this thing. We, we've attempted some large pieces before, but this is probably twice the size of anything we've attempted before. And, you know, I, I comfort myself at night by thinking, well, if we can do it this big, we can do it full size. And that's what's getting me through it at the moment. Well, this is the location for our sinking house. This is where it's going to be. It'll be shot from this side of the river. Um, it'll be a plate shot. We've built, back in the studio, um, we've built a model of this, uh, this street scape behind us. Basically, we've got uh, the two bookend buildings, as we call them. The terracotta one in the middle will be replaced completely um, with a model. And that's actually the one that we'll see collapse in the film. You won't see that terracotta building at all. We wanted to get some form of bubble effect around the base of the house as though the house was going down and the airbag supporting it were giving way. So what we've done is we've put six compressed giant compressors onto three barges and having 18 hose pipes coming off which are going to be held underwater with weights with buoys to point the nozzles up underwater. Basically, it's at third scale. Uh, the reason we're at third scale is because water still scales okay at that. Um, and also, you know, you, we, can, we can use traditional construction methods at that sort of size. 
uh, and then the dressing becomes the real sort of miniature work. What are we waiting for, Steve? Uh, we're waiting for the, uh, the sun to sort of come around at such an angle that it, we get all the texture and the, you know, the, the finish on the front of the building. I mean, the miniature's been arranged in this sort of orientation uh, relative to the sun to sort of line up with the actual sunlight that we got in, uh, in Venice. solidly on it you know, for months and months and months now. It's nice to see all their hard work come to fruition. It's very rewarding. The biggest problem we've had is the limitation of weight. The normal way would have been to do it in flats and plaster. But of course, now we're going to have a lot of water. And uh, it was suggested that we would do it with um, fibreglass to keep it light, rigid, and also water impermeable. Eva, are your ears clear? Good. And get yourself set. That's quite. That's a good starting position. And remember, this time, exactly the same action, but with some bubbles. So some special effects bubbles coming up from your feet. I had to learn how to control my breathing underwater because she's struggling in a cage and it was quite scary at the beginning you know like without any air and and I think it's gonna be because I, I uh, rehearsed in very clear water and I've heard it's gonna be quite dirty murky you know yeah I'm sure it's gonna be quite scary and when you're ready float away and cut Barbara was saying, well, where's the storyboards, Martin? Where's the storyboards? And of course, I, I was bluffing, saying, oh, yes, I'll do them, thinking in my head I'll never be able to storyboard any of this, not least of all, because I hadn't really seen the set properly. Secondly, I didn't know, you know, what the restrictions were going to be, because, you know, the, the set basically didn't have a floor. It was all water with a little bit of, 
few beams around and so forth. But, um, and I never did get to storyboard it. You know, the point was I just used to go in and plan it and work with uh, Gary and the stunt boys. And we worked the fight out progressively what had to happen. And, and, and we filmed it under very trying and difficult conditions. What we've done is we spent like, a bit of time on there with Chris Corbold, got it moving all over its place to see what he could actually move, where the breakaways are, what we could do with them. So but lucky enough for us, we can actually do all the drops for real. We haven't got to put any our rigs on there at all. So it's actually sort of made it a bit slimper for us because we can actually literally have people fall through the floorboards into the water or the double can jump onto the balcony when that gives way again he falls into the water so it's you know it's, it makes it a lot easier for us hitting water from anything above 30 feet kind of hurts a bit so uh, you know talk to them about it i'm sure they'd say yeah it's, <laughs> yeah yeah it doesn't hurt at all <laughs> Well, the set has basically uh, got very little room to move because the floors are all, have all been destroyed, so it's all water um, from the Grand Canal in story terms, and everything is crumbling and falling apart. It's very slippery. Uh, the elevator, you catch a little bit of it um, behind me. That has to crash over while the... Um, uh, while Ava Green is inside of it, it crashes into the water, Bond goes to save, so pretty um, exciting stuff, but a very, very difficult set to work in. And it's, it's extraordinary, I mean, it's kind of, it's beyond reality, I mean, but it, 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 has, enough of, it has enough of a real edge to it. it. It's quite confined, I mean, it's very confined space, so, uh, you know, we're working very closely together and it's, you know, once you're on it, you can't get off. And again, a great thing is that you know, we're not using huge amounts of CGI, so I'm not reacting to things that aren't there. And the stuff that's falling from the ceiling is genuinely uh, you know, stuff that's falling from the ceiling. scary because Vespa is stuck in the elevator and uh, it's dropping. No matter how much you, you trust those people, you know, you can't help thinking, my God, it's going to drop for real. Well done, special effects. Well done, everybody. Great job. Thank you very much. We're moving on. I'm quite dreading the underwater stuff, but you know, I'm sure I will be surrounded by you know good people. But it's just I'm sure it's going to be quite murky and I'm short-sighted, so it's going to be like in a nightmare. It's actually rather fantastic filming underwater because you um, nobody can talk to you, <laughs> and it's quite 
quite nice, really. You're just um, quiet and alone, and it's uh, it's quite a good. It's meditative. You know, you can be. Uh, I can sit under there for hours. Excellent from Martin. Ava, what was lovely? I've never done it before, so I mean, it was a very interesting um, exercise to go through. Um, and it's just difficult. We've got to get the bubbles right because the house is supposed to be sinking and it's throwing up all sorts of turbulence. You know, you can't rush it, it just has to be done with patience. This is Dan. 